Hey! Hey! Hey-ho! Here we are. Look at uh, this. We got, we're joined by one of our favorite guests. Thank you so much. <laughs> joined by one oh, of our yeah. favorite comedians Comics. working. Uh, great comic. Oh, yeah. One I, of the best in the biz. Uh, Mark and I used to use you as the example of, like, the best comic on Late Night. You oh, would yeah. do the best oh, late night that's sets. Nice. Yeah, I uh, got to do late night for a, a lot of sets there, and but I, I was like different from you guys because I um, I was obviously older than you, and so my whole exposure to comedy was just watching Letterman. And, sure. Uh, so I thought that was what you were supposed to do: write five minutes and uh, put it on TV somehow. And uh, uh, I think that's kind of going away a little bit. Oh, it's hundred percent gone away. Yeah. But I think at the time it still moved the needle. You yeah, know, I remember yeah, Mark messaged you. Didn't, you. didn't you message Nick when you were like, I'm doing uh, Conan, like, what do I do? Like, what, Do you have any advice? Didn't you do that? Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you got it. But uh, I was a huge fan. Because you did, what did you do, four Lettermans? Four? Like, you did way more than four. No, I did 11. 11? What oh. the hell? Wait, 11? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, and then like, a couple Conans. Yeah. And then yeah. a Ferguson or two, if I'm not mistaken. Old Fergie. Yeah. Old Fergie, the alcoholic heroin addict, great host, but yeah, he didn't. He wasn't there. I, I think he was there for one set, but um, wow. Ferguson wasn't there. Well, he yeah, he taped it beforehand. That's so weird to do a show and the host isn't there. I know. I know. Do, the do they do that to Do they do that to musicians or is it just us? Well, yeah, I think sometimes they just can't make it. Who was the guest host? Well, no, it was no, Ferguson was I mean. there, but he. He like they tape oh, it way before. And, I see, and then they plug it in when they don't have a guest at the end of the thing. Right, right. It takes away the thrill of the experience. Totally. I mean, yeah. I, I have like good experiences on late night where like Bill Hader would knock on my dressing room door and you have a moment. Like yeah. I, it takes away from the totally any, any big guests you're on with. Yeah, I was on with uh, my first one was with uh, that. Um, guy from the columbus zoo jack hanna oh wow he's a legend yeah he was, <laughs> but i think i think that was the one i got bumped and because uh, his dogs went long ah. <laughs> Seriously, the dog. yeah that's rough yeah that was tough sorry nick noodle my mom noodle was stretch there. tonight yeah <laughs> <laughs> Rough, rough, bumped you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my mom was there, and she said, uh, like, even after the show ended, she's like, you didn't come on. And, and uh, my sister said, yeah, mom thought you were going to uh, come on after the show. <laughs> they would just let you do that. Yeah, that's, wow, how, that's how TV works. 11 Letterman's, <laughs> though, is that's 55 minutes of comedy. Yeah, that's a lot. That's, that's insane. A, that's a, you did a special worth, worth of Letterman sets. That's incredible. Plus Conan's, plus Ferguson's. Yeah. That's a lot of jokes. And that's a lot of TV clean comedy. Yes. And, and yes. you have, in your act has edge. I mean, there's it's very rare that a comic with like a real strong like point of view and edge can do that many late nights. Yeah, again, like all my favorites were like Jeff Stilson and uh, Jeff Cesario and oh, obviously yeah. Hicks and um, Stephen Wright. And all those guys had bite to them, obviously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh, But I remember watching them going, that that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and uh, coming home, you know, drunk and half high from high school and turning on Letterman was like. Well, that's just like gold, baby. Yeah, of course. You want to cut guy. anyone off here? Let me get the old... There we go. Look at you guys. That's yeah. Sam's cooking up cups? on Negroni. I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, we do. What do you think? Let me know what you good. think. Got the, the heroin spoon stirring. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Can I take Doggy. this off? This is the Negroni, right? Oh, yeah. Ah, smells like freedom. Mm. Not bad, right? <sighs> Oh, delightful. That's an easy one to make. It's just three parts, right? Perfect, though. Campari, sweet vermouth, and, and some good monkey 47 right there. Hey, nothing wrong with that. This is what success looks like to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's also what being a failure looks like, too. Yeah, it's the same, Drinking in the same afternoon. Thing. It's the exact same. <laughs> uh, so how long have you been sober? Me? I've been sober 25 years. Wow. Yeah. That's a run. Yeah, I, I... Were you I, doing stand-up when you were... Yeah, I did stand-up for 10 years until, uh, until I was about 30. And then uh, and then we, 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 we shut it down. What was... What? The team got together. And <laughs> <laughs> what, what did the going out of business sale look like? <laughs> it was just bad. It was, in, it was actually in Cleveland and... Uh, oh. Was it Hilarities? No, it was uh, the Improv uh, down at the Flats. Sure. And... Um, 
Yeah, it didn't look good. I mean, it's just all the all the things you would imagine. And uh, I just said this. You know, you know, I was never actually very good at drinking. I just always got hammered and uh, threw up and passed out and started trouble and uh, just everything. Ba- it just wasn't working. Yeah, and I didn't think I could uh, continue to do it on a productive manner. So were, I, the, were there incidents at the clubs that were the impetus? Oh yeah, for... I got banned from uh, the comedy and magic club for drinking. Wow, Whoa. that's and that's the club where they tell you not to curse too. Yeah, yeah, no, they they were so good to me, and I did so many sets there. But uh, oh. I got drunk with Slayton there one night, and Bobby uh, I couldn't drive, and and they asked for my keys, and I said, okay, here's my keys, and then I went. Ran out to my car and I had to hide a key. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to pull me out of the car. That's not so bad. No. Um, but a uh, kid you ran over <laughs> after that. <laughs> but other than that, I thought you were going to hit somebody. You know, you were beating no, people No, there was up no, yeah, money. yeah. Well, yeah, sure. But no, there was no deaths or prison or anything like that. That was, that was, that was the height of it, but um, yeah, I stopped in Cleveland, um, and um, look, it's uncomfortable. It's not fun to not drink. Sure, it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's easier to drink and relax a little bit, but uh, that's not how it works. Tough place to quit, though. You don't want to be sober in Cleveland. That's a wake right, up call. Right? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And you don't want to be sober in comedy. No, yeah. no, no, you don't. A lot of discomfort, <laughs> a lot of assholes. A lot of this awkwardness. Helps. Yeah. A lot of you, and I, you and Attell. I don't know. Do you hate drunk hecklers as much as I do? Like, yeah, I, I the mean, worst. Uh, it's just when they aren't coming at you with anything real and you're just like, wow, this is this guy's big moment and I'm in the middle of it. Yeah, it's the worst. And you go, shut the fuck up. And then they pull the guy out and he goes, I was laughing. I'm yeah. like, you called me a homo. How's that a laugh? I was trying to help is the best one. <laughs> Yo, yeah. that's a classic. Help. Yeah, you said you hope I get AIDS and die. Yeah. That yeah. was you helping? Exactly. No, it's, uh, it is, I resent the bad drinkers because I think they make us all look bad. Yeah. I don't like, like, like whenever there's someone who does like a drunk driving thing, I'm like, you're supposed to behave on this shit right. so we can keep doing it. Yeah. You know? Right. Good point. Keep it at in least check. you're in New York, you know. I was in L.A. and drinking, and you have to drive everywhere. And mm. That's not this is pre-Uber. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely pre-Uber. Definitely pre-Uber. I remember one time I lost my keys, and it was like four in the morning. Actually, it was here in New York when I lived here in like '91, '92, and um, I uh, I knew that my window was open in my apartment, so I climbed, jumped on the fire escape, and climbed up the fire escape, and went into the apartment and got into the bedroom and realized I'm in the wrong fucking apartment. <laughs> oh, man. That was scary because there, there was people in there. and everyone, What did they say? They were, they were asleep. Oh, oh my, my God. God. B&E. And I heard, yeah, oh, my God. A host of... Yeah, crimes there. So. That could have been a lot worse. Yeah, a mil- for a, a million... So no one woke up? No one woke up. No. That's wow. the worst thing. Is it you're was like, four you're in like the morning. this is so easy to do. Is yeah. what you realize. Yeah. yeah. Damn. Was she hot at least? <laughs> <laughs> what he is this, Manhunter? Well, it sounds like a porno start. <laughs> <laughs> or a start to a porno. Who am I, Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that is crazy. Wow, that's wild. But it, you know, it didn't. It didn't like. It didn't devolve into like I said to where it's insanity where you're wrecking cars i mean i wreck cars but like um you know duis and jail time and mm-hmm. did you ever things around get arrested ankle. for it no oh you're fine yeah, yeah i should get good. back out there yeah. <laughs> the team. got a full bar here look exactly. at that <laughs> I'm, i have those drunk nights where i'm like i can't believe i'm alive you know, like yeah. high school nights and college nights. Holy shit. I woke up once on the railing of the, the interstate um, in my car. Like the, the two wheels were up on the yeah. on the rail. And I was yeah. like, and I had to pull off. <laughs> but, you have to pump. throw away the suicide note. And... You never went, this is not <laughs> yeah. being good. No, no. I said, oh, I'm glad I survived that. And I went to a bar. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. Yeah, How I about just, you, Sam? I just like it too much to It's so to much quit. fun. That's the thing, it's is so I, great, and I, it tastes good. And uh, When I was younger, of course I had those, and... those, those blackout nights where I was like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm an idiot. I, yeah, I could have gotten killed, but you know, you hitch, I've hitchhiked drunk. I've done stupid <laughs> shit. Yeah. You know, like, that was not safe. I'm, right. you know, but you're too young to know any better. Right. And, uh, Can you hitchhike in Manhattan? You just get it was cab. in New Orleans. Oh, wow. It was. I did this shit. 
and some guy just picked me up. I was wasted. Whoa. Uh, yeah, and he fucking handed me a joint, and we smoked it, and I didn't oh end up getting God. sodomized, so it's a win, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. not bad. But, uh, I mean, I yeah, dude. No, you do dumb shit all the time. And uh, but then you get older and you're like, yeah, I don't want to have to quit because it's nice and it's a nice way to end. Well, the yeah, night. you got to weigh the uh, positives and negatives. And, yeah, uh, the hangovers are a problem, but you know you deal with it. First dates have to be hard sober. I would They're think. the worst. Yeah. They're either uh, yeah really awkward or someone leaves. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's always that. I always put in my. Uh, I used to put in my uh, profile that I I was sober. You know, I'd always put I I don't drink. So if that's a problem. Um, yeah. Do you think that scares people away? Or do oh you... my God! Yes. Really? Yeah, I think so. I think I don't think women want to sit there with. Uh, John Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> the worst superhero ever. John Quiet. He's in the library again. They order four Manhattans, and you're just like, keep going. Uh, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> wow. So, but some women are sober, too, and you guys probably have a bond. Yeah, I don't think I've ever uh, met them. Really? I'm trying to think. Maybe I have, but no, nothing, nothing jumps out. Oh, yes. Uh, the woman I dated for seven years was sober, or okay. not, not even sober. She just didn't drink. She didn't have a problem, but she just was uh, kind of a health nut. Uh huh. And uh, so that went well. That was good for. Seven. That's good. You you want the other person to be the healthy one. You want to be the fuck up in the yeah, relationship. Yeah, definitely. I think. Yeah, because it's cooler. <laughs> right. It is. You got edge. <laughs> I think I think of your jokes all the time. Like I was reading the Einstein book, and you have a great Einstein joke. Oh yeah. About someone was like, oh, I'll, yeah, I'll read this book. Maybe I'll come up with a joke. And I was like, oh yeah, Nick Griffin already has the best Einstein uh, joke yes. about being divorced. Yeah, Einstein, Einstein got divorced. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, it shouldn't be. Do you take this woman to be your wife? It should be. Do you think you're smarter than, than Einstein? Einstein? Yeah. That's brilliant. That's a wow. yeah. That was uh, that was a big one. That was like I hadn't done. T Matter of fact, I was also down in. Um, New Orleans, and I hadn't gotten on Letterman yet, and uh, uh, I'd just written those, like, five to seven jokes about divorce. Mm -hmm. uh, Were you freshly Einstein divorced? Einstein was one of them. What's that? Was the divorce very recent? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, was not, it wasn't like, it was probably a, a year and uh, I remember I, I was there down there with Havy at the there was an improv at some casino down there. Harris. Harris. And it wasn't it wasn't very good. It was like in a ballroom or something. Yeah, but, shit, um, it's gone now. Um Comedy. Anyway, I yeah, I hard. It's not not for good, me. I got a little comedy room. town. Anyway, I got a call that night. I got uh, back from the show and I got a call that night from uh uh, the uh, Letterman show. We want we want you to do the show. We oh, love the Einstein wow. bit. Whoa! And, what a feeling. Yeah, yeah. That Einstein bit. I really. I, every now and then you write something. You go. This is gonna kill. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not like every tenth joke, but maybe every twentieth joke. You just go. Wow. Totally. This is gonna definitely destroy. It's a gift from the gods. Yes. Like, thank you, you. Yeah. You just. It's for. It's a gift from showing up in front of the fucking notebook. You know. Yes. You just, you just go. All right. Well, here we'll treat you. Exactly, but boy, when they come, you gotta you gotta be grateful. Cause oh my God, yeah, because it's, it's gonna be yeah six months a year before it, it happens again. Wow, I can't imagine being in New Orleans with Havy. That must have been a fucking hoot. We had a blast. Yeah, yeah, we were down there, and uh, again, that wasn't a great uh, room. I can't even. Nah. How old were you back then? Well, how what year are we talking here? Probably two thousand, something like that. Maybe oh, ninety eight. Wow. Yeah, I was in uh, high school. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> You've been at it a while, and I, I remember playing a club called Loonies in Colorado Springs many years ago, and I text Nick oh my, a well, picture you see my of picture? headshot on the wall. He oh, must have been, you must have been 25 God. in the headshot, yeah. mm. and you just wrote back, please don't send me that. <laughs> don't send me stuff like that. Attell used to do that at every club. He'd, he'd find my first headshot and send me a picture of it. Pull that up. Yeah. I bet you were a I handsome devil. I feel, uh, yeah, I feel like you and Attell are the... Late night black coffee cellar drinkers. Oh yeah, maybe like, a diner at three a.m. Yeah, Dave loves to go to a. Oh Jesus Christ! Let's see what do we got. That one in the red shirt's pretty embarrassing. Did you oh, get the? You? Oh yeah, well what a hunk! Oh, look at that hair. You look good. Beauty. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now, did you get the sitcom all that that hype back then? Because that felt like the the seemed to, to be the blueprint. Yeah, I did the uh, Letterman there and had a really good set with that uh, <clears throat> divorce stuff. And um, some writer called and uh, Letterman's company, and they put us together, and we we got a deal 
to write a sitcom, and then we went out and pitched it with uh, producers from the Letter <clears throat> from the Letterman Company, and we sold it to ABC. But then um, we just sold the uh, script, and once they read the script, they it, it wasn't one of them that they chose to uh, shoot sure. you know, shoot a pilot for. But did it have? But was it a little darker? No, they they kind of no. Well, once you if you sold it, that's already a win because yeah, I've it's... never even gotten that far, and I've pitched twenty shows. Really? Oh my God! Yeah, it's Going different though now. It's yeah, like, it's totally different, I mean, right? It's, it's just, totally different. Yeah, you kind of think like, man, how long did it take to develop a show pre-strike? And now you're like, it, so much of it's like, do we need them? I, I know, like, I don't know. It, it's know. it's tough. I don't, you have a bur- you don't have a burning desire to have a TV show, do you? Not at all. No, yeah. especially now. I, I got into it. One one I didn't even sitcom. back. I didn't even back then. Ha- I I was just wanted to be a great comic, and uh, of course, I loved to have the money, and it was going to help me, you know, fill seats sure. in a room. But I wasn't I just like use I a different part get of my sitcom. brain, though. I I, I get bored. I, oh, oh, it's a lot of waiting. One. But it's, yes. I know it's a lot of waiting. But if you work with someone else, it is a different thing. It's fun to like write a show with someone else, and I've yeah. d- I've done that a few times that never worked out, and you know, d- developed in anything. But I like that. I like working with like one other person and creating something but uh i mean stand up will never not be number one yeah right. but if you guys can create and be creative and, and make your own thing that's great but you got to create give it to these retards in the suits and then they go i don't know change this here's your notes apply that then resend it and you're like well now it's different but now do we have i don't know if we have to do that anymore we could just kind of make shit and put it on our youtube channel that's how we? i feel just put it out yourself yeah, but you're right. It does get softened down to where you go, well, I don't even want to do it now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, my God. I remember it. working with the production company where the changes they would try to make to our show, they would they would make no sense. The, the, was this a sitcom? It was an animated show I wrote with Dana Gould, and oh. I loved it. I really loved what we it's made. A great Dan, Dana's brilliant, and he's. Uh, I had like a very loose idea, and he liked it, and he was like, we can make this into something great. And he, he developed it into like... 3D like characters with heart and an arc right, and, right, and right. it was so fun and, yeah he's uh, brilliant I love, oh, yeah. I love him and he's also like become a good friend of mine but he uh, we're working with this company and they're just the changes they're making uh, they're like they would contradict the notes in the first paragraph exactly. would contradict the notes in the second and I'd be like do you understand that if, if we pull a thread it, it undoes everything Right. so yep. we got really frustrated it was like seven months of building something and I'm sure Dana Gould had been through that a million times a million times but he really is like he's like a savant when it comes to building stuff I mean he really was right. uh, sure the Simpsons Come yeah on. He's just, and he also did Stand Against Evil, which that's up your, that's in your wheelhouse yeah, right there, horror comedy. Too. Oh yeah, uh, he's done a lot of great stuff, and his stand up's great. But I mean, uh, it's it's a tough thing to do. It's tough, and it's better to make it on all the committee. It ruins it. It muddies the waters. That's why like a curb is great. It's just one guy's vision. Yeah, even Seinfeld, man. They said they didn't wouldn't take. Larry David said he wouldn't take notes after like two or three rounds of notes for Seinfeld. He said I'm not taking notes. And it's the best show sitcom ever. ever yeah. So like leave leave us alone. Yeah. And then you, sometimes they give you notes. It's like you said. There and then are you people apply that them. give good notes. So I've worked with people also the opposite who I'm like, I'm like these are really constructive notes. They weren't forcing me to take any of their notes. They were more like. What if you did this? And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I, if they're not forcing you and it's more of a conversation, right. I welcome another voice. Sure, sure. You know? But if they're trying to just muddy something that you've created and make it into something else, and now nah, fuck that. It's a waste of time. Yeah. And then it takes a year and a year and a half goes by and people go, whatever happened to that? You're like, well, actually, we're still in development. And it's just, then you wrote 18 jokes since then. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I, I that, that, that process took like two years and it was always like... Have we gotten a call? Have we gotten a call? And then I'm the guy. This person's on vacation. <laughs> we can't contact them this week. It's a it's a holiday. It's right. a Mar- right. Martin Luther King Day. We can't contact them. You know what? And in two weeks, it's going to be, you know, it's another holiday. Right. And then by the time it, they respond, it's fucking Thanksgiving. And then right. they're like, everything's shutting down. Exactly. It's, it's Christmas. No one works November I wonder to December. who will That's... be on sitcoms in five years or whatever. It's, it's not going to be so many comics or it's no. probably be comics that don't want to be you know comics so much one robot that netflix right. created <laughs> yeah. one fat robot and then one really hot robot yeah. and the fat robot's like i don't even know how i got this chick <laughs> and there's a and there's a that laugh track good. yeah he's like I, this is the fucking show right here yeah it's it's like king of queens but it's a fucking they're robots 
That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. You drink too much. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> it's okay that he hits her because they're not real people. Right. I'm watching the game. <laughs> Leave me alone. And he's got a black friend. There's a black robot. There's diversity. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's tough out there. So, yeah, stand-up's the best. You can just do what you want. Yeah, stand-up's the best. It's like we were saying, you know, you find that joke uh, out of yeah. nowhere after, you know, six months and it makes it all worthwhile. And mm. then you get that excruciating anxiety from not getting a joke for six months. And then you find that joke again six yeah. months later. And I followed you at New Jokes a couple nights ago, and I loved you always doing new shit. And, and when you write stuff, uh, it's like... Your writing is so concise. So there's like, I, I'm trying to like find a way to describe your style, but it's almost like it's autobiographical. Slow is the style. <laughs> <laughs> it's slow, but it's it's autobiographical, but also kind of like Mister X. Right. Yeah. And also, it's like I don't know. There's very few people who have a style like that. And it's yeah. observational as well. Observational. You, you can break down the couch. philosophical at times. I broke down yeah. the couch. Yeah. And also, like it's um, or it's so short. That it's so hard to accumulate. Uh, you guys, oh, you guys put out a uh, year as well. You're you're, you're a short, short, short. It, is it takes forever to it is put forty five minutes together or an hour. It's yeah, I know. Amazing. This would be a great segue into new bits. Sometimes we talk about new bits we're working on that are like yeah. half cooked. Do y'all have anything like that? I have like mostly horse shit right now because we did a two hour episode just recently where <laughs> I threw a lot. But most of my ideas are either like in the act right now or they're garbage. But I, I'm sure I have a couple things. But yeah, I got a couple ideas. Uh, but you want to do one? Well, this one's horrible and everybody hates it, but I think it's got legs. All right. Uh, you know, you got Anne Frank's diary. <laughs> All right. My, uh, bro my buddy's got a kid, a girl who's like 15, and he. The mom found the diary and she was reading and she was like, Jesus Christ, this is terrifying, the, the hooking up with boys and all that. And you're like, thank God Anne Frank wasn't two years older because it would be mostly hand jobs in the diary, <laughs> you know? So that would, like, the, the dad would be reading it like, yeah, these Nazis are bad, but Jesus Christ, you, you blew a guy? Come on! Last night I heard you do it and you were like, thank God she got caught when she did. Oh, yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, for the sake of the family. It's close. Yeah, no, there's something here. I think it's an idea because well, she hasn't gotten something there, horny yeah. yet. You know, we got. Thank I God like she the idea that, early. The, that the dad is like, Jesus Christ, I hope they get us now. Yes. Uh, yeah. She's, she's in that attic alone. Who knows what she's thinking? Yeah. And she never thought anybody would read it. <laughs> so she's going to really open up, you know? That's an idea. Yeah, well, she had a crush on that boy, right? Yes. I mean, could have could have been. Oh, she did. I, yeah. I haven't. I'm it's been years. Not read it. I read it in high school, but uh, and I, I, and I saw year. the play with a young uh, Natalie Portman. Whoa! No, Jewish. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> well, you never know. Yeah, you're right. They don't cast Jews a lot as the. Yeah. They don't. But uh, well, yeah, I've always a... said Jews have had a really hard time in Hollywood, <laughs> and it's uh, <laughs> a big belief of mine. Uh, no, she uh, she was great in it, but she's always great. Went to Harvard. Yeah. Did she? Yeah. Yeah. She's got, she's she's got, got it all together. She's, mm -hmm. she's got an Oscar. Yeah. Is that right? From Black uh, Swan. Swan. Yeah. And marital problems. Get in there, buddy. Just uh, just recently. Yeah. yeah. I think the guy cheated. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I think he's like a ballerina too. He was. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. You never know what's going on behind closed doors, but that sentence doesn't read well. Ballerina cheats on Natalie Portman. <laughs> and you, yeah. and all, all you're waiting for is the picture of who he cheated with because yeah. you're not sure which way. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's never, I mean, it's not going to be Natalie Portman. No. But you're you know? backstage with all these hot ballerina ladies. I think, you know, it's got to be tempting. Yeah. Oh, of course. You yeah. know, they're all. And he's like, he was like the. We're just saying on paper, you're like, what the? F I mean, of course, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, any, anyone at work is anyone with a sexy type job is going to have. Yeah, I remember being yeah. 16 in a bar, drunk and peeing in a urinal, and they, you know they they wrote all over the walls, and one guy wrote, "The hottest girl you've ever seen." Some guy's tired of fucking her, yeah. and I remember being like. Whoa! That blew my mind. As a Fifteen-year-old, sixteen-year-old drunk. I was like, "That's unbelievable." Because I wasn't—I never got laid. I was a nerd, you know. Yeah. So I couldn't fathom fucking a hot girl and getting tired of it. <laughs> it would—it didn't even no, register. I remember, that's definitely a quote that when you see as a kid, it does. You're like, Phew. "Yeah, oh yeah, it blew yeah, my that mind." That started. That's the beginning of growing yeah. up. Because right you're just like, "I'm just trying to get laid once." once. Yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. But totally. my my wife's always like. Who would cheat? Like uh, the M. Rada, what's her name? Emily Ratajkowski. Yeah. Her husband cheated. Yeah. yeah. And she's like, you know, the supermodel, super yeah. hot lady. 
And you're like, it's just different. It's not about yeah. who the would cheat. Woman. By the way, try having a conversation with her. I'm sure it's. Oh. I'm sure that's when you cheat. I'm sure the first time you're fucking her, you're not thinking of cheating. I'm sure it's like, <laughs> of course, three Who's months in when went out when with she, her. Oh, Pete Eric Davis Eric and Eric. Oh, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, and, uh, and Pete. She likes right. comics. Yeah, I should make jokes about her. Comics have a chance at seeing. Yeah. <laughs> she seems very smart. Yeah. And well she's read. Awesome. Big fan. And I would love to hear her opinion. Yeah. 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 I read her book. Um, I don't even know she has a diary. Book. <laughs> 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 it's all about fingering herself and uh, blowing her country. <laughs> We'll have you as a guest. Come on in. Yeah, sister. no, she's we'd love to have attractive you. woman. Beautiful, beautiful. Who Emily? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is Emily she up close, or Emily up close, or Portman? She almost looks like a. She almost looks like a alien. I saw her at the Knicks that game. That kind of works. I know. No, like sexy oh, aliens. Yeah. Like, it's like the, it's like the chicken Mars attacks. And like I'd fuck Super her. Hot. What? Uh, what's his name's girlfriend? Who? Um, Tim Burton's girlfriend, oh. the redhead. Oh, I know you're talking. Helena Bottom Carter. No, uh, he had a girlfriend before that named. Uh, fuck, I there can't remember her name. I, Something, but she 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 was in uh, Mars Attacks. She was so hot. Oh yeah, that was a weird movie. Yeah, Jack it Nicholson. didn't work. Totally. It didn't really work, and it, no. it's like weird. It's like weird to see Nicholson in a comedy. Yeah, it was like, I love him in a comedy, but like it just didn't write. Like it didn't kind of yeah. crazy work cast itself. though. Oh, oh dude, geez. I remember Jack Black and. A lot of names. Lisa Marie. Lisa uh, Marie's. That's who it is. I don't know her. Who's that? She just passed away. That was Tim Burton. She did. Lisa Marie Presley. Oh. No, no. This is uh, just Lisa Marie. No Presley. Oh. Yeah. Wow, Jack Black, DeVito, Annette Bening. I mean, Pierce Brosnan. Annette, Annette Bening was a, She was a dime piece. I think piece. Martin Short's in it. Michael J. Sarah Jessica Parr. Natalie Poor. Everybody's Martin in Martin Short. Short. Yeah. <laughs> Christina App. Old, Everybody's in this. Old Appy. Oh yeah. Good lord, what a cast. I might Pam have to make Greer. another Negron. This is fucking good, dude. Get a Negron. Rod Steiger. I love it. I love it. I've just been drinking on the beach all day, so I'm trying to pace. <laughs> oh, where, you were in Brighton Beach? I went to Brighton Beach. Dude, I've never, the, I'm a New Yorker. I've never been there. It's beautiful. It's all Russian. Great Russian food, right? Great Russian food. We got Russian food with yeah. the wife. We took we took the car down. Beautiful day, by the way. Beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I did a podcast last week on Brighton Beach, and I was like, I walked out. I said, let me see the water. Clean pretty empty i was like everybody talks about rockaways or jacob reese or whatever the fuck yeah i heard jacob reese yesterday see but brighton beach is a hidden gem where do you take the r uh, the r train there i drove but you can take the f for the r yeah it's right yeah. down there it's all it's on the way to coney island and it's beautiful and it's pierogies. free yeah Dizzy? we got not too bad not too bad today jumped in the water i was in the ocean today yeah it's just right there and we all take it for granted what was the ethnic Mix. There. It was a big mix. It was very Eastern Bloc. Yeah, I've seen only white people there. Is what I was trying to get at. There was mm. some uh, Hispanic, like they, really, as well. But yeah, but it's it was like, it was great. Everybody it seems like they kind of like keep a stiff arm. There's a little of that. Yeah. Apparently, it's On more diversity. I think so. It's really? more communist there than Russia. I heard because they all moved here in the '60s when communism was kicking. And then they never evolved, whereas Russia even evolved. But they just stayed, you know, the the same yeah, way. Yeah, Russia seems like a really chill place right now. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. I was reading the, the Putin book by uh, what Masha. Is, G what are you, uh, Putin, I Einstein? So smart. Well, are I, you? I, fuck, I was just on vacation. You read on vacation. You sit ah! by the fucking water. <laughs> Let me get some light reading and get a Putin's biography. Well, I, I didn't finish it. I read the first couple hundred pages. I was just curious. But it's literally every... It? It's interesting because but it reads like a fucking novel because every chapter <laughs> is like you're like I bet this is like a really interesting history in Russia and then you're just like every chapter they introduce a new guy and I'm like I bet this guy gets shot in the face <laughs> and, and curveball he does there every time go. every time some guy's like I don't think Putin's a good guy and then he's like in a, like a dimly lit staircase and yeah. the light goes out and he gets shot in the face <laughs> well, the, that's literally every chapter the someone, proof is in the Putin someone <laughs> someone someone opposes Putin and they just get murdered yeah that's, that's, did yeah. you pause the Stalin podcast you were listening to to, to get through the, the Putin book <laughs> Jesus that's dark what a vacation well you know you, but it does that sound was I live two blocks from the Strand bookstore so I ah. I'll, so it's you know, somebody's just like you're bored you're, you're killing some time and you're like ah that could be interesting I, whatever's gonna maybe like fuel a bit I don't know yeah and the biographies are the best yeah nothing's better I mean, than a biography I don't know that's great though I'm proud of you <laughs> <laughs> That's a good look, though, sitting in Greece reading a Putin book. Yes! You know, you look like a talented oh Mr. Ripley God. or something. Yeah, you look like a diplomat or yeah. something. <laughs> right before I killed a guy in his boat. Yes! Yeah. Good movie. 
Great movie. Not bad, yeah. And I think that was the height of Gwyneth Paltrow's beauty. She's not like super sexy, but she looks, she kind of glows. She glue. Yeah. Glue? Goop. Uh, (laughs) And also Philip Seymour Hoffman is incredible. Oh, Oh, my God. It was on TV the other day. It's a great movie. And a great fucking book. Patricia Highsmith. Oh, a couple. You can read a couple of Ripley's. You're a big, you're a horror guy. I like crime, too. I read a lot of crime, yeah. True crime or like noir? No, noir stuff. Like a lot of Patricia Highsmith. She's good. Yeah, she's great. So there's a 90s Ripley movie with... um, John Malkovich? Malkovich. Yeah. Yeah. No, not handsome at all. Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, a remake. It's an original. <laughs> original from the he 90s. plays. He plays. He plays Ripley. Ah, yeah. huh. who's the other guy? Yeah, who's the who's, who's, who's Dicky? Or is that Matt Damon? <laughs> <clears throat> no, Dicky. Dicky's Jude Law. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, he and whenever on. I hear Jude Law's name, I think of Rock. Jude Law. <laughs> <laughs> remember when he trashed Jude Law and I remember Sean Oscars? Penn defended yes, him. Yes, yeah. yes, that was great. Wow, that yeah. was amazing. That was the original Will Smith slap when Sean Penn. <laughs> really? Him. Yeah. That yeah. was a that was a weird Oscar. That was like an oral slap. They yeah. were just it was like right when actors were like not slowly not being able to laugh at themselves. Yes. That was like that like preceded the Ricky Gervais just torching everyone. I feel like Rock went lighter and they were just like remember Sean Penn came out like Jude Law is a really good great, yeah. actor. That's a pretty good Sean Penn. <laughs> That's not it's bad. 2002 called Ripley's Game. It's yes. not a, it's not a remake. I remember this. Yeah. Oh, Who, is that that must have been after it though, no? I yeah, think it was talking to Mr. Ripley's in the nineties. After? Really, nineties? Yeah. No, was, no way. I, I think it was nineties. Oh, this. Is I think Ripley sorry. was late nineties. We talked. Yes, yeah, so that's what so I'm this saying. This is two thousand two. Oh, this, oh, sorry. Okay. Wow. What a weird jump. We talk is. movies on this podcast like a motherfucker. We love movies. You gonna movie. see Oppenheim? Is that of course? Interest you? I, I can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Uh, I might. It's hard to get me to go to a movie. I know, yeah. but this one is like this one. I think you got to see in the theater. And well, it got, Barbie, it got tremendous reviews. Oh, good, thank I, God. I even want to see Mission Impossible. I mean, I feel like it's like a fun. It looks so good. Yeah, he's just like at a certain point, you just got to applaud. Yeah, his, his movie stardom. He's so solid. Exactly. I just I just rewatched. Here's my wreck. I just rewatched Captain Phillips. It's, it's good. Great. I've never what seen the it. Tom Hanks. Yeah, one? I'm good? the captain now. It's so good. It. You would love it. I it's think a true I would. story too. Great Damn. movie. Just I gotta riveting. Watch it. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. The acting's great. Tom Hanks kind of nails the accent for the first time in his life. There he, he is. He what was that guy supposed movie to be? Star. Where is he supposed to be? Somali from? pirates. No, that. but that. where is he oh, from? Oh, oh yeah, I where's can't. The Vermont. Vermont. The oh, he's in America. Vermont. No, he's, Verm- he's a Vermont guy. But where's the boat supposed to be? In uh, they're off the some kind of... Somali? Somalia? The, Bal- the Balkans. They're in water. And- they're by the Balkans, whatever that means. What's that one? Um, not uh, well, Bajubi. Kajubi? Mabuti. Djibouti. Djibouti. He's right by Djibouti. Djibouti this is basically, it's basically like the formula for Air Force One, but on a boat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it's real. Yeah. It happened. Ted Alexander had that great bit about, boy, pirates have really changed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's a guy with a parrot and a fucking eye patch, and now it's some Somali guy who's trying to steal your cargo. So how come they don't it's carry funny. guns on these ships? How, is there There's no guns. Why not? If you guys are attacking with guns, how can we don't attack? That's what I said. Maybe them. they can't have them in certain waters or something. Okay. I don't yeah. know. I don't know, but that was a big international thing. waters. They have a meeting. I don't want to ruin it, but they have a meeting in the hull with all the crew, and they're like, "If there ain't no guns here, let's go home, Captain. Let's get out of here. They're coming back. They're coming back." And he's like, "No, we're gonna do our delivery." Oh, the Somalis didn't have any guns. No, no, they have guns. Oh, they do. They yes, have the AK-47. Those guys don't have guns to shoot back for some reason. Oh, yeah, okay. they have hoses. They have hoses. And That's all they guns. <laughs> hoses. That's a lot of good that does. I know. Well, <laughs> tell that to the civil rights. <laughs> I'll, I'll make you wet. <laughs> That's all they got. <laughs> Sounds like me with my wife. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. But yeah, great movie. Check it out. Yeah. You never do any movies? You mean be in any movies? Yeah. No, no, I haven't been in any movies. I'd like to be in a horror But you write movie. movies. You love horror. Yeah, I'm a what, big horror. What's like a great... Mark and I feel like we don't know horror as well. Not not yeah, well, horror. there's, you know, there, there's a new one, uh, relatively new in the last three years, called Antlers, that I thought was Antlers. really, really good, that 
It was with Carrie Russell. Oh, Ooh, okay. She was and, fun. Yeah, uh, she was lovely, right? Lovely. She, great head lovely. of hair. Another, in Mission Impossible. She's one of those. Oh, and really? she was a uh, Mickey Mouse girl, a Mouseketeer. Uh, yeah. That's a real skyrocket. She's been in show fame. business forever. Some yeah, of those she's people beautiful. have been, yeah. Ryan Gosling, Justin Timberlake, Britney Spears, a lot, a lot of Musketeers. Have you seen. Um, Mouseketeers. I. I, I I came with a couple recommendations. Please lay it on me, fat. Salt and Sea. What is that? Is it's, that the book? No, it's a uh, it's a noir uh, movie with Val Kilmer. Mm. Pull it up. Never heard of it. I, I fucking T-O-N. love Val Kilmer. Oh, he's great. I just watched Real Genius for the first time. I'd never what? seen it. I'd never seen it. Eighties classic. It's he's amazing. He's it. great. Does he steals up? it. It's pretty funny. What yeah. is uh, Real, Real Genius? Oh, with it's Val so Kilmer. funny. It's yeah, so well laughing. done. I love him. Smart movie, smart jokes in that. Another 2002 movie. Hmm. This is around the year you went to, you got Letterman. Yeah, probably, yeah. B.D. Wong. Oh, he was good. Yeah. I like him. It's all about uh, meth. The meth trade. This is right after 9-11 when things got dark. Fight Club, this all has the same vibe. Oh, Goldberg. Goldberg, yeah. Oh, this is very druggy. It's all about drugs. I've never heard of this. This looks fun. And uh, what's his name? Um, fuck. Sarsgaard. Who's that guy? Oh, yeah. Sarsgaard is so good. I thought he should have gotten an Oscar nomination really? for this movie. Dude, this, Mark loved... Mark turned me on to the Val Kilmer documentary, Woo! which I watched. How was it? It's incredible. It's heavy. heartbreaking, it's though. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's on Amazon. It's br- I mean, it, it was like... It breaks your heart because he's so, he's just great. I he's one of those dudes that I feel like was just in a lot of bad movies. Yes, but when but when he got a meaty role, he just crushed it. Yeah, there's Every another time. good uh, Val Kilmer movie called Spartan. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It was it. written by David Mamet, the guy who wrote Glengarry Gun. Sure, Wars. yeah, sure. that's, I love a, that's another crime movie. Spartan. Uh, I don't know Spartan. We got Spartan, two hot. Yeah. I'm this watching both. Great, of these. I'm watching these too. These are great. How do we miss these? Ed O'Neill. Love Ed O'Neill. Mammoth and directed. <laughs> a fat woman came into the shoe store today. <laughs> <laughs> Let's rock. <laughs> no, ma'am. <laughs> Still acting. Boy, he was a hunk. He was a hunk, man. And he was just oh, so yeah. fucking funny too. Funny. Top Secret was great. Top Secret rules. Wow. You know what a movie I love him in is uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Oh. Great movie. I fucking love that great movie. Great popcorn. And he also just That's Shane Black, it. I think. I love yeah. Shane Black. I watch, I watch The Nice Guys like every three months. I, feel like. <laughs> I just watched half of that on a plane. It's on Netflix now, so I just watch it. It just puts me in such a good mood. Yeah, It's just a yeah. fucking good vibe. I'll say you watch Kiss Kiss. I watched it about two months ago. It Half of it you couldn't do today. I mean, is every that Robert joke Downey is, Jr.? Yeah, every joke is like... Slur, slur, Asian, gay, so a lot gay. of gay stuff, right. a lot of women stuff, a lot yeah, of Yeah, but rape he's stuff. gay in it. That's true. That helps. Who, Val Kilmer? Yeah. yeah. He's Gay Perry, the P.I. Gay Perry. <laughs> that movie, we watched it on the tour bus, and everyone was kind of like, here we go. And I'm like, and then within like five minutes, everyone was like, this is fucking awesome. It's great. It's so good. I saw someone post a scene yesterday on a TikTok video, and it reminded me of it. It's like a realistic version of what this actually happens when you try and break somebody's window. Oh, yeah. It broke all the rules, like, this movie. Oh, losing a lot of blood here. <laughs> <laughs> it's the same scene where they go up to, like, stop the shootout, and they uh, they go up in the elevator, and they just see everyone getting shot, and they just puss out and go back in the elevator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like you never see shit like that in movies. They're always, like, heroic, but they're, yeah, they're pussies it's great when stuff is like that. Exactly. It's so good. Yeah, Shane Black is, is fucking great, man. The Saint is another good Val Kilmer movie. Yes. He was, wasn't he a blind guy? No, that's was what, that with? Uh, no, that's yeah. the one he turned down for. Uh, that's love at first sight. You're thinking. Oh, the same is the one he did. He turned down the Batman movie to do that. And oh, that, like, fucked what? Him. That was his second Batman movie. Yeah, that yeah. would have been his second. Yeah, Batman? but it, he hated doing Batman. Yeah, the first one sucked. Second one yeah. sucked. Who's the yeah. bad guy in in Batman? Was that Mr. Freeze? Yeah, that was the one that would have been Schwarzenegger. Oh, it was second. Uh, with, we're talking like the it, it, technically they were the third and fourth. If right. We're counting Michael Keaton, but it was like well, I, I like think the Keaton. that was. Um, yeah, I like the Keaton ones too. They were fun. Tim Burton. Yeah, but remember, uh, Mr. Freeze, chill out. Yeah. Cool down. He had always had a, a right, cold he had a line. Cold line. Oh. Yeah. Although uh, Uma Thurman is 
poison ivy. So oh, hot. Oh, hubba my hubba. God, Unreal. She's gorgeous. Oh yeah. Good looking lady. Yeah, but then Pull no one up. made the Batman movies fucking cool as hell. Nolan, he's the only one who's allowed to promote Oppenheimer because he's in the Directors Guild. They're not striking. Yeah, but I think they all probably feel weird. It's weird. It's weird to have something come out now. Of it's course. Just... Boy, even the... Uh, My uncle. Even the <laughs> costumes in uh, back then didn't look as good as they do now. Uh, they look, they, it's like cosplay. They look it's cheap. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like a Comic-Con cosplay. bitch. That was the problem with this movie is that they were trying to be like kind of campy, but it just didn't It didn't work. It, yes. And, and then Nolan went dark. I mean, campy can work, but like it just didn't work here. And then uh, they did Dark Knight. I mean, the Batman Begins was incredible. Oh, yeah. You Changed know? it up. Yeah. Was that the first one? Yeah, yeah, that was the one where he's like training and shit, yeah. and a badass. And I mean, that was I mean, that was an incredible. Everyone talks about the Dark Knight because of Heath Ledger, but I thought that first one was pretty damn good too. Oh, it was great. It was that great. was Liam Neeson. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Killian Murphy. Same and... the these franchise. pictures of Nick Cage as the what Superman. the fuck? How what? did that? Whoa, that he... never got made, right? Uh, no, that was no, with, supposed to be with Kevin Smith. No, Burton. Oh, what? Yeah, and he they this tried him out horrible. and everything for it. <laughs> Oh my god, he looks like the guy from uh, The Room. <laughs> what is he, he doing? Does. Hello, Mark. He looks like trans Nicolas Cage there. He does. <laughs> Nicole Cage. Nicole Cage. Uh, he's too intense to be Superman. You're right. Hi. Yeah, everyone everyone at the Daily Planet would have caught on. Yeah. It's like, dude, yeah. you were fucking emo. <laughs> right, right. Right. He looks, yeah, he just looks like an alcoholic or a heroin addict here. <laughs> he looks like the guy on the the, the Sunset Strip like who's dressed sick. as Superman. You're like, dude, it's not gonna work, dude. He's, I, lo- I Face Off was, yeah, on that TV hair today. does not work at all. Face Off is a great, oh, it's a great up. action movie. Holds up, it's insane. Talk about campy, they nail it because yeah. they're so over the top. That's John Woo, right? Yeah, yeah it's woo. fucking hilarious. Woo, it's, woo. That's a campy movie that works. They, you know what I realized? They just cut out any part of like story. They're like, we're just yeah. going to lose story or bad. Just make every scene insane. Woo, damn you good looking. <laughs> so bad. Face Off is amazing. But good. Con Air, all those. I love. The Rock loved all those. Those are that. both good, but I think Face Off's on another level. Face Off's, but yeah, they're, they're, I like both of those, too. I mean, Connery was so fucking cool. You know what? I got a great wreck for you guys. Hit me. Old school Connery and Michael Caine, The Man Who Would Be King. Well, I haven't I seen don't know it. That Incredible one. movie. Pull it up. I've seen it. The Man Who Would Be I bet it's got a hot Rotten Tomatoes. Christopher Plummer's in it, too. Oh, he's always good. That's a badass movie. It's like a, they basically take over the. It's got like Apocalypse Now vibes. He takes over this little village and they, uh, and they basically like they think he's a god and it's fucked up. It's really great. What did I just watch with Plummer? It's about the newspaper. What did I just watch with Plummer about the newspaper? Oh, and Pacino. The Insider. I told you to watch that. Insider. Amazing. I told you. Is that, that's Michael Mann. That's, He's the king. I say that's Michael wow. Mann's best movie, and I love Michael Mann. Easily Man, But, but the, the Insider is a fucking 10, dude. And Russell Crowe killed it. Isn't that a great movie? Great movie. You were text- I told Mark to watch There's it There's a guy pod. who can pull it together at any moment. Is Crow? Russell Crowe. He, yeah. he could. He's so good. But Mark's texting me while he's watching. He's like, "This is fucking insane." I, I was just like, about to go in. on stage, and Mark's like, "Dude, this movie rules." Yeah, and it's there's not much action, but no, you're like, it's a lot of talking. But you're just sucked in. You're locked into it. It's so that's good. good filmmaking when it's you can get that kind of suspense uh, out of a thriller without any violence. That's or one of um, just good writing. Val Kilmer's best roles is Heat. Heat's uh, good. Oh, Heat. He's yeah. got a he small. He's cool. got a small part, but it's great for him. I love so him. So good. Damn, he dude. always rings the most. Uh, even in Top Gun, he was like, "I'm just this hot blonde guy." No, I got. He had to make us some right, a make meal it out of it. Something, yeah, yeah. He rules. I heard a conspiracy theory that uh, the Connery character from The Rock is 007 after he got retired, and that's why they had oh, another really? 007. Oh, that's fun. And there's like little hints if you look inside The Rock that he's saying, "I had this case that I was working on." He mentioned some case he was working on why he got arrested. And it's what happens in one of the 007 movies that he starred in. Wow. wow. Cool. You know who the new Bond's going to be? Who? Dylan Ooh. Mulvaney. <laughs> right. Just gotta, got announced. You got to love Reddit because of the shit they throw on there. They're like, yeah. we got a conspiracy for you. And you're like, oh, and it's like a cool one like that. And then the next one is like, Jews eat babies. And you're like, all right. <laughs> I mean, you guys have range. I'll give you that. There but. was one about you guys last week. Oh, what? Great. Yeah. Which one of you actually drinks more? 
Mm. Uh, what do you think? It's the same. Right? I think it's about the same, but I think it varies. Like every now and then, I'll go on a bender, and you're yeah. doing good, and you'll go on a bender, and I'm doing good. So I think I, I think I hear stories about Mark because I was just doing the Great Outdoors Fest, and Laura Peak was on the show, and she was like, "Mark and I drank till five a.m." and I'm like, "Damn, I don't really do that anymore." So I was like, in my head, I'm like, maybe Mark has the edge. Well, we were in Grand <laughs> Rapids, <getting> competitive. <laughs> no, we had to drink, yeah. But I also just you know, uh, but then Mark, then Sal Acuse mentioned this to me before the pod, and he was like, "But Mark does shrooms, and you only drink." Mm. So that's so you when, might take a night off. You don't do shrooms. shrooms? I don't do anything but alcohol. Do I just you? like no, alcohol. I don't oh, you would love them. <laughs> you would love them. He's You're the, the kind of guy who would love. Them. <laughs> well, I think you can dabble in a in a vegetable. Yeah, that's possible. I yeah. got some gummies. You want to try? Watch. Put on. He's a, sober. But you put on the thing. You put a pot of tea on. Have a shroom gummy. It's a great night. Mark, would you do one more of these? Or are you done? Sure, I'll do another. All right. Can it's I, early. Can I put the mic back on? Yeah. Yeah, Mike Pack. Hand me, hand me a drink. This is exciting. It's an action-packed Get episode. You're moving pack. around. I'm moving, baby. I'm Woo! moving and shaking. I'll, t- I'll tell you. All right. So you're still on the road constantly. Yeah, I probably do. Well, I, I probably not as many. I used to do 40, 42, 43 weeks a year, but now I probably do 30. Hmm. Yeah, I do less. Ah. 30 is Look still a good guys. number. 30 yeah, is a that's lot. a good number. Oh, yeah. What? But you love it, though, don't you? What's the one you look forward to? You mean what city? Yeah. Oh, jeez. Come on, no. Nick. You've been to every goddamn city. You did twenty. You did two nights in Wuhan last year. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, a lot of those Midwest cities I like because they're just... John Wuhan. People are uh, into it. Like uh, I like uh, Omaha a lot. Omaha's oh. Omaha funny bone is incredible. One of the, one of the best funny bones for sure. And she's Ruth. so nice. I, I love I've Colleen. Been working for her for Colleen. Sorry. Colleen. Yeah. So when Ruth I was in Indianapolis. I've been oh, drinking. Oh, really? Uh, forget I brought it up. No, no, Colleen. Uh, dude, when, we, awesome. when, we, uh, when I played the club, she was talking about how much she loves you, and I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, oh. we've been friends forever. Did you guys hook up? No. Come no. on, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> resist those that silver fox yeah no, Omaha what was, else do you uh, like Nick she's more of a mother figure to me which hey. actually doesn't stop me from that's <laughs> <laughs> a genre of porn that's right <laughs> um no, but I, I like uh, I like Omaha I like Kansas City I like oh uh, you're a Midwest man yeah aren't Cleveland. you from Kansas what's that yeah I'm from Kansas oh I didn't know that yeah damn you got a New York vibe yeah. Maybe it's just the depression. Maybe that's. I mean, it's it's it probably is a little. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you, I think that's part of your act that I like is that you you have like a Midwest sensibility, but there's like a, something very New York about you too. Right. Yeah. I think it's because I kind of got my start in New York. I went there after about two years of doing stand up, and I only stayed for like three four years. But I I got that just running around doing sets, you know, hurriedly anxious and all that stuff. Yeah. And there was so much going on back then. Like, back then there was, like, 20 cable TV shows right. you could get on, and everyone was trying to do it. And MTV Who, who were the kings of New York back then when you came Well, came just uh, the, the likely suspects, you know, uh, Louis, Dave, Sarah, Mark Maron. Um, were you cool with all of them? Jeff Ross. Yeah, but I, I kind of kept kept to myself um who else was in back there did the tough crowd crew bother you no i wasn't you? there oh you I were there, for there. i moved to la before that oh yeah. gotcha yeah all right and some of those guys weren't even here yet i mean colin was here Thank he you. was killing it and uh, oh yeah ray King. romano was killing it and judy gold was killing hell it. yeah all, all still doing people. it yeah all still doing it that's nice to see yeah Hey, everybody, We Might Be Drunk is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. I bet I'm wearing it right now. Yeah, same. Are you checking? Oh, look at that. Boom. Bam, folks. Sheath. Can't get a better, uh, from what do you call that? Uh, Promotion? uh, Endorsement. 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 It's hot and sweaty outside, but with Sheath Underwear, you can stay cool. It's innovative uh, design. has two pouches, one for your dick, one for your balls. Keep things separated so you can get some airflow down there. I, I mean, I wear them constantly. It's my favorite underwear. For yes, sure. same. It's all I wear. I threw out of the other ones. You got to keep them separated. <laughs> it, it gets compliments from the ladies, too. The oh. women, women like the sheath underwear. Very nice. They feel good. They look good. Uh, for ladies in the audience, they uh, have sports bras, bikini briefs, boy shorts. Go to sheathunderwear.com. Use code DRUNK to get 20% off your first order. Plus, Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com. Promo code DRUNK. Get sheath underwear, support the show, support your balls. Here, here. All right, one more. 
Easy peasy. Oh, here we go. Hey, folks, it's time to talk Liquid Death. If you're looking to shake up your hydration routine, look no further. Liquid Death's mountain water, flavored sparkling water, and iced tea not only taste delicious, but it comes in a cool can that looks just like a tall boy. Feels like you're drinking when you're not. They're not alcoholic, so there's nothing stopping you from packing in your kid's school lunch and having a little bit of fun. With flavors like Rest in Peach and Armless Palmer, I shouldn't do copywriting for these things. You can make any boring event a little more exciting. It's all we drink over here. I just had the tea. I got the salsa right now, and they're good for mixing. I love them. Yeah, so get I'll yourself do, I'll do one. Any in there? I want, I'll, I'll do one in there. Yeah, if you got one in there, throw it to this guy. Um, Liquid Earth uh, has the coolest swag in town. Grab a cap, a watch, a koozie. All their stuff has artwork you used to only get to see on heavy metal posters in your friend's older brother's room. Show off all around town. You're drinking water like a cool guy. You can find Liquid Death's healthy beverages on Amazon or at a retailer near you. Plus, we might be drunk listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death apparel purchase. Available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash drunk. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash drunk. Thank you. (coughs) Mm. Keep the burp. Yeah, well, who were like? Were there anyone? Did anyone? Do you feel like took you under your wing at that point, or was it kind of like you know the head writer for uh, Conan now, uh, or the guy who used to be head writer? Ryan Kiley? Still, no, um, Mike uh, Sweeney. Oh yeah, he's great. He, yeah, he's, he's a, he stuff, was though. super super nice to me. Mark Cohen was super nice. Oh, to Cohen. Me. Cohen. Love I Cohen. hung out with Attell. Um, yeah, most of those guys I talk tell, Barry a little bit. Tell um, I had the best line about you. You guys did some podcast that I listened to, and you said something, and the room got bummed out. And and uh, Tell goes, "Let me open a window and let the sad out." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That actually did happen. That was such a good line. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was great. I remember thinking that is the perfect. I mean, he's, he's the he's king just, of that. He's the king, and it's just so natural and easy and. Um, but yeah, he's, I mean, I remember, I mean, I hate to make this about David Tell, but I remember from 91 people coming down from upstairs at the olive tree to come down and watch Dave do sets and it's still happening. Still happening. And he's also just a great guy. Yeah. That just helps so much that he's just the coolest also. But yeah, I wonder when he's going to put that next special out. I know he shot something in SF and, uh. Yes. Of course, cops. I text him. I'm like, dude, I can't wait to see it. And, and he's just like, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's what I heard. He's so Louis pessimistic. Like, it was amazing. I was there. He murdered every night. He killed. Yeah. The roof came off. His comedy just made it's like he's the dude that, like, because I watched him since I was a kid. So he's the dude that when I go down, I watch. I feel like I'm Everyone a kid again. Everyone does. You, you just forget your bullshit and you're like oh this is what it feels like to pay for because we all get jaded doing this for this long but then when you watch Dave there's something that like it takes you out of this and you just feel like you paid for a ticket and it just comedy. all works you know the yeah. look and the tone and yeah. the, obviously the world class jokes it just in one package it just doesn't get better I don't I, it doesn't get better than that it just... it's, he's the king and I, I always say he won't this is gonna this is dark but I don't think he's going to get the love he deserves until he dies. Uh, Let me open the window dies, here. Huh? <laughs> Let me open the window uh, here. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm saying when he dies, everybody's going to come out. The outpouring is going to be insane, but it I should be insane that now. Shit. I really resent that I shit. I do, too. I, I, That's why we try to blow him every and I, show. And I really like... <sighs> When the when the fucking fake Patrice fanboys come out of ah. the woodwork and they're just like, I always knew. And I'm like, were you buying tickets when he was alive? Exactly. Or, or are you just a fucking poser? Right. I hate that shit. It yeah. bothers me because, you know, we've lost so many great comics in the last, you know, 10 to 15 years. You know, we were fortunate. I remember, like, one of the best nights of my comedy life as a spectator is watching Greg Giraldo's Hour with Mark, at, you and me in the back of comics, comics. just fucking laughing our ass oh, off. Oh, comics, right. Over I mean, on but dude, but we were like inspired. Oh, like, this is what comedy is. Greg Giraldo, dude, like shitting on hecklers, doing social commentary, personal stuff. Like, right. like Greg was so sharp and funny. Yeah, yeah and, he was uh, great. He was I amazing. I loved his stuff. I loved it. I saw him at Gotham. I saw him at comics. I remember one magical night, Mark Maron's podcast was new and kind of niche. It was like a fringe thing, a podcast. It was so new. And he did a live one at 
comics with Mark Marin, Greg Giraldo, David Tell, and Morgan Murphy. Wow. And David Tell and, and Giraldo ran it. They just had a million great lines, and it was fucking amazing. <laughs> and Mark Marin kind of just threw his hands up, and he's like, you guys just go. Yeah. They, they were killing so hard, just riffing and zinging on Marin a lot, which was yeah. great. I, at one point, Greg's like, Morgan, I think you fucked all of us. You know, like, it was gold. <laughs> She's a really funny comic. She's a great joke writer. She's an underappreciated comic. Agreed. Well, she writes on every show in LA. Right, like right. she's a sought after. But writer. you brought up Brian Kylie a minute yeah, ago, she's man. A... I saw I saw some Brian Kylie bits the other day. Like fucking brilliant one liners. Oh, like, oh my god! Oh, yeah, he's, he's Rex, but amazing. He had a joke about like how like I I knew a night a nice mafioso when I was young. You know he uh, he would actually pay me just twenty dollars every day just to start his car. Just such a sweet guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. Yeah. Yeah. Like they were oh, all Mr. Stuff. X. We were like, yeah, damn, Kylie's these are great. great. I call my wife Pumpkin because you get smashed around the holidays. Uh, <laughs> I'm so Irish. My blood type is O apostrophe. Uh, I mean, he's brilliant. He's got a million of them. I love his stuff. That's funny. Yeah, he's awesome. I love just straight jokes. I, I do, too. It's, it's so, rare. It's so great to see a great joke. Just what, you know, every the best. Night, the awesome. Yeah, yeah he's like, uh, my name is Brian Kiley, which is very Irish. My uncle's even more Irish. His name is uh, Potato McSmallPenis. <laughs> <laughs> Just I mean, hard jokes. On. They're just That's hard jokes. Gold. I love them. It's they amazing that like you can like <laughs> create something that never existed and then make it funny. Yes. That's impossible. Yes, exactly. Think of something that's never existed. Now make that funny. Yeah. Oh, he had one about uh something about a bouncy house, and he's like, uh, my dad was so broke, he he never could afford a bouncy house, but he wrote a couple bouncy checks or something wow. like that. I'm butchering it, but it was great. Yeah, he was so cool. He's a dude I met when I was like 18 or 19 doing stand up, and I remember like sweetest guy. He was chatting me up at the bar. He was kind of, I think he was like kind of curious because I was like a child in the bar, uh -oh. and. And he was like, he was so fucking nice, you know? <laughs> that sounded creepy. Yeah, what the hell, He man? was like, you're kind of a cute kid now. Yeah. Uh, no, he said, uh... I, like, I work for Subway I, sandwiches. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, no, I went up to him and I was like, man, I, I like your comedy a lot. I knew he was, and, uh... And he told he was telling me like, I was like I saw you on Doctor Katz. I like Doctor Katz as a kid. Sure. You know, my brother watched Doctor Katz, so that made me watch Doctor Katz. It was like that line on Comedy Central, Doctor Katz and the Critic, which I was like the best, oh, the best fucking line on TV hour. at the time. I love both those shows. But uh, he was he was just talking. He was like, Yeah, man, the the, uh, the you know, I do crowd work and I'm like filthy when I do crowd work, and then I do my act and it's squeaky clean. So people are like, What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> But uh, I remember he was so freaking nice. And then whenever I do Conan, he's a writer there. So he and yes. Lori, Lori Kilmartin always like say what's up and chill. They were awesome. Yeah. The cooler. She's got great jokes. I saw her at the stand, I don't know, a month ago. And she had all this killer new stuff I'd never heard. It was gold. Yeah, she's fucking yeah, funny. Yeah, she's great. She writes a ton. Oh, she yeah. A lot. Oh, yeah. Just sharp. Boom, yeah, those, boom, those Conan boom. writers just have that muscle killer. where they every day yeah well conan's not gonna hire scrubs conan's a fucking i wish great conan comedian. would come back on in on the tv i just yeah what's i thought he was doing something on max what's going on isn't know. he doing mm -hmm. something well, he's got a pod the happened. podcast is big yeah the podcast is huge and it may just be enough for him he's but. just so he's just so was conan you're a letterman guy or conan or was it a little bit of both i was a little bit of both but i was really 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 into letterman when i yeah. was young uh my favorite Letterman joke uh, ever was um, they were riffing. Uh, Dave was at the desk and Paul said, hey, what, what did you do this weekend, Dave? And he goes, I did the same thing I do every weekend. I sat at the end of the bed with my face in my hands. <laughs> and I remember being a kid going, wow, that is fucking dark. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> also, it's got some you in it. I feel yeah. like there's an influence there. But it's just so wow, wow, because this millionaire TV star yeah. is still sad. Yeah, that's, and that's it's like it's supposed to be, and it was funny. It, but man, oh yeah, it's yeah, I'm, quick. Is there something about that? Like you can reach the pinnacle, and you're still like, well, this ain't it. This he, isn't what he I said thought. Of. Something that I'll, I think about all the time where. Somebody said, uh, hey, do you like being a celebrity? And he's like, well, I'm so insecure that if I wasn't a celebrity, I don't know if I could handle life because right. I need people being that nice to me. And I'm going to be like, whoa, that's interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. I had such a positive And that is like experience. the definition of a, of a celebrity, too. It's yes. like people being nice to you just to make sure you're okay. And for a guy to admit it like that. Yeah. You know, everybody tries that cool, like, oh, yeah, it's all great. But he said that, and it blew my mind. I, I had such a positive experience with Dave that it was like, uh, 
I mean, it was like crazy. It was crazy that he was that nice. I, I feel like I got him at, a, at an amazing time because he had was been- Was that a festival? We did the Netflix Fest, so yeah. I did. I he interviewed me on his show. Yeah, so I'm I just saw sitting that. down with Letterman, and I'm like, dude, insane. I went and watched. I had to see you two together. It's worlds colliding. <laughs> it's fascinating. But yeah, no, I met. I, it's like when you when I when like Norman's. I literally I was there was other people on the show that had like 40 people there. I had my agent and Mark. <laughs> I'm like, that's all I have. Real fact, every, people have like family there, and yeah. I'm like, I got Norman and Berkowitz. <laughs> that's what I got. So you know, but I'm there, and of course. Uh, you know, the first show, you're, we did two. The first one, you're pretty nervous. But the second one, I'm like, uh, you know, I, I first one went pretty well. But the second one, I fucking, I, lay, I was like, I'm in. I'm ready. Because he was so nice and chill. I mean, I think he, when he did those shows, it was five episodes a week, four or five episodes a week. He's kind of run down. He's probably cranky. Because how do you do that job and not be cranky? Sure. But when, when I did it, like, I remember reading an Apatow's book, this interview with Dave. He goes, I'm so isolated right now that I just am talking to random dudes in the coffee shop because I'm bored. Wow. I, I miss it. So I'm like, can you imagine you're in a coffee shop and David Letterman starts <laughs> interviewing you? That He's bad. like, so what are you up to? Yeah. Right. So I got that Letterman where he was like so happy to be doing this and he was such, he was so positive and like, Talking about our rooftop special, Matt. Like, wow. like in, I'm in, I'm in the uh, right, green room with that. Dave before, and he was like, "This is so interesting to me that you just created something out of nothing. Like there was nothing." And I'm like, "I got that Dave, where he was not just, yeah. edge of his bed with his hands in his hands. Yeah. No, yeah, I got a like very. A yeah. He was very positive and he was very kind, and I was like, "Man, like, it's funny when you're a kid, you're like, I'll do anything to get on Letterman, and then you're like." Well, it's not that Letterman I'm on, but this is like, this was fucking crazy. It's almost better in some ways. I, you... I, for me, it was like, you know, Mark and I have done our fair share of late night sets and, you know, they're cool. But I remember one time I met, uh, I had a conversation with Norm MacDonald about, at Caroline's about, uh, about late night. I was just like, man, I would kill to do, I would, yeah, I know I love the shirt, but I was like, yeah. I would kill to do like panel. And he was like, no, stand up's better because... You just you don't have to wait for someone to like tee you up. You just tell the jokes. And I was like, in my head, but I was thinking like, but I think the bar is lower when you're on panel because sure. they just set you up. And if you're funny, the audience is like, oh my god, yes. that was like a riff. Right. So true, you know. So to me, I I didn't agree with that, but that's how I felt. It was like, man, the uh, we're so dialed in now because we're just so used to podcasting. We're so used to talking, and we're so like, I have jokes in my back pocket if the conversation ain't going well, right. Right. but. I think you're just given such a bonus if you hit on panel as opposed oh, yeah. to stand up where they're like, if every line is not a fucking home run, you're a failure. Whereas if you have one home run on a panel set, people are like, holy shit, that was killer. Like yeah. Rodney on Carson, like every, every line one, it was a hit. Every line. And let's was be honest. It was a setup joke, but whatever. Yeah. Of course. Fucking crush. Yeah. And let's be honest, no, not to throw shade, as the kids say, but you get a uh, Madonna on there. What the hell is she talking about? And right. then you come out there with some killer stories and some Mr. X. Yeah. You're going you're gonna to win. Yeah, I, I like what I would do late night, and maybe this is true for you, but like you would have, some, I don't want to name names, but if there was like a dud first guest, you'd be like, this is great because they're going to be so eager. Yes. The audience is going to be so eager to hear something funny or of course. entertaining or whatever. And those Letterman crowds were white hot. White I also hot. find that sometimes the best Conan that I ever had was following Bill Burr, though. Mm. So oh, I, really? I did, so I think sometimes when someone whips them into shape, I mean, oh, Bill. Oh, interesting. Bill, it, the, the guests on that show were Bill Hader, Bill Burr, and then me. Wow. And I feel like Bill Hader killed. Bill Burr just annihilated. And then I go out, and I'm, they're just like ready to rock. Right. Whereas I remember some of the sets I wasn't as pleased with, the guests weren't good. So I think sometimes it can work It can work both ways. Yeah, it could. I had Wow one show, and I was like, <laughs> oh, I got this. You know, I'm going to save this whole fucking show. I had a rough set. But that's to your point. <laughs> No, I think sometimes having a great killer guest before you can really save the day. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the hunger, is it, it is a thing. I mean, and you're definitely watching them, like, I'll bring it around. But sometimes I'm watching them, like, you're fucking killing the whole sh I remember following Cory Booker and Fallon, and I'm like, Cory Booker? You think I'm going to follow? Yeah, the, yeah from oh, Newark. the politician. Yeah, I'm like, you think I want to follow Hope? <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking, this is brutal. <laughs> and then, of course, it's hilarious. He comes to the green room afterwards, and my mom is there my mom's like mr booker what you've done for newark i'm like great now he's gonna hang for like 30 minutes <laughs> and he did he, he's a good politician he was like i got a vote right here let me fucking oh, work man. it very I nice guy vote. very nice guy <laughs> but you know i was kind of like this guy buried me this oh, motherfucker buried no. me with your own mom 
with my ALL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I hope it didn't bury her. But I had a Nick Offerman once, and he was funny in the green room. Like, he was in that, that common area, you know? Him. For and, Conan? Yeah, and there was one point where I had to walk through with a towel on because I, you know, they were steaming my shit because it was all wrinkled. And uh, he's like, shave the boy and send him to my room. And everyone's <laughs> laughing. And I was like, whoa, Offerman's being, he's on. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, he's so damn good. He's a talent. At, I mean, he's like a great actor, but he also, I mean, like Parks and Rec, that shit's pretty legendary. But oh, yeah. Solid. And so him and solid. he's married to Megan Mullally. Can you imagine? They're just both pretty cool. So funny, so cool. They look like showbiz. I mean, and not in the old fashion, but just like solid it's talent. Like Spencer Tracy and Hepburn. Right. Yeah. But comedy. Yeah. But Dude, comedy. There's apparently Spencer Tracy back in the day was such a drunk that the studio, oh, yeah, he was big the studio would hire someone to shadow him when he'd go to bars. And he would, if he would get too blackout, they would just like carry him into a car because they didn't want it to be a news story. And I I'm gotta like, get that guy. What a <laughs> yeah, you do. what a gig. What a legendary drunk. Yes, <laughs> yes, because he was such an icon that you couldn't let him fuck up too much. I guess. Man, wow. I love that old Hollywood show, but I mean, it was like it was just like a cooler time. And like, now it's like so corny. I feel like, but like back then. So so corny. And it's a, so corny. A, a camera on you every moment. Like they, he'd say some horrible word at a bar, and he'd be ruined. You but know? you can't be like that anymore. Exactly. Or, or, or you'd be ruined in a second. But I mean, there's something so fun about being like an old showbiz drunk. Totally. Totally. You know? With the studio having a car for you and all that stuff, and love making it. sure it all works out. And yeah. Yeah, that is nice. You know, like I, I was on the beach today and I, I told the wife, I was like, hey, watch this. And I just stood on the sand and started peeing, to, you know, in the bathing suit. And it's dripping down. I had a few margaritas. <laughs> and uh, I just kept thinking, like, thank God all these people are Russian and don't know who the fuck I am because I can do this. Otherwise, they're like, headline, TMZ, Mark Norman defecates on right. beach or whatever the fuck. And you're like, let me just be an idiot. Well, like Spencer he's, like, Tracy, bragging about how pristine these beaches were, and he's like, "I pissed all over." <laughs> <laughs> I buried it, you know. I moved the sand around. But that's classic. The that peeing on yourself. It. I went in the ocean. That's a classic. I don't know. <laughs> I thought everybody did that. Uh, Is that not a common? That's a pretty in the low ocean? classic. Wow. Yeah. Mark shits his pants in a bar. I'm doing a bit. <laughs> it's, a, it's a classic comedy. <laughs> Woo, it killed. It was some like Asian kid, like yeah. I was on vacation with it with a woman and I and this is my classic bit. Okay, I, here we in, go. We're in a we're in a nice pool in Greece. It's like a nice hotel. And oh, I'm like, no. I think this is funny. I'm like, come here a second. And I just fucking Samoan drop her. I just yeah! throw it over my head. And it gets a, a laugh from everybody. She's like, You're a fucking idiot. Uh, You're a complete fucking idiot. Wait, but, wait, where she was in the pool? She's in the pool. I just I, I was like, Hey, come here a second. And I just like I put my ar her arm over my head, <laughs> flip her over, just flip her in the water. I and she's love like, it. You asshole. That's Funny. what life's She about. was cracking up. Good. Yeah. That's great. But then headlines, Sam Morrill abuses women, <laughs> you know? That's where we're at now. That's what people do. But that's fun. <laughs> same day as they catch you peeing. It's the, in the paper and the same <laughs> podcast is ruined. Uh, I think I did a decent job with beer drip here. Yeah, yeah. These are hitting hard, These right? These are great. I got to slow you. down. Negronis are fucking... I'm like, I'm old school with What cocktails. is Negroni? It's sweet vermouth, gin, and Campari. So it's oh. one, one part of each. And it's it's the classic cocktails are the best. I mean... Mm -hmm. Everyone's making these new cocktails. And look, cool, keep trying, whatever. But I always go back to like Martini, yeah. Manhattan, Negroni. Old Those, fashioned. Old fashioned. Yeah, yeah like the classics. Are the, the, the classics are the best drinks. It's like genders. The classics. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Those are the best. Paper Plane is a new one. That, that, I love. that is a, a I solid love paper one. Plane. A little sweet. It's a little, but good, a little too but sweet good. for me. But it's it's a cool one to dazzle someone with where a, yes. woman, a woman's like, I don't like whiskey. And you're like, check this shit out. Oh, the ladies love it. Did yeah. you get the paper plane guy? He's He's coming in, the yeah. inventor of the paper plane. No way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, that's not possible. It was oh, invented in like 2007. Yeah. See? Oh, you're talking about <laughs> not that, not this. Not There's a drink. Not the cocktail. The right I didn't even know there was it's, a paper uh, plane. It's whiskey, amaro, aperol, and lemon juice. Do you get money for products. that? Like, do you get credit somehow? Where you're? We should get credit for the paper plane because we we put I, on the map. We put it on the fucking map. I the way Don Draper brought back the old fashioned. Mark and I blew the fucking paper plane up. Hell yeah. And I don't mean to be talking out of school here, but all you motherfuckers know I'm right. Yeah, I get a million DMs. I had my first paper plane. I'm hooked, baby. And then they drive it off we, a cliff. We blew, yeah. 
And then they die of alcohol poisoning. <laughs> but for, for a moment, for yeah. a fleeting moment, we feel good about ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And no one can take that away. I shared the story. <laughs> 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 Woo! Boy, you got to be jealous, huh? <laughs> Look at you drinking that seltzer water like a cuck. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> Nick, so your special is on YouTube right now. It's on the 800 pound gorilla. I tells YouTube us page. coming out. I hope it's not the same. T- well, no, yours, no, no. It'll no. come out in five so, years. So, <laughs> so you're special what's the name of it absolutely wonderful absolutely nice. wonderful you are really truly i mean one of the best comics working one of the great, great and a dude, writer i amazing. still remember There's two negronis to get to that ah. no i think i opened with saying you're one of the best no i, I know i I'm love too. your comedy well, I've, you I've always it. loved your comedy and i think uh i remember the first time i met you actually which is Ooh. i was working the door downstairs at broadway, at broadway? working the door at broadway wow and amazing that you remember and I remember I was reading the book called uh, A Fan's, a fan's Notes, Notes. Yeah. and Nick said I've read that book many times and I was like that's a dark motherfucker because this is a dark book yeah that's a dark, dark that's a dark book. book it's a brilliant book yeah you get the so bats good. In there. but the nice. fact that Nick was like I've read this multiple times no but dude uh, no you were you. Were, I would work the door at Broadway and you were like one of the guys that I would look forward to seeing because a lot of comics sucked over there and then I'd get yeah. like a refreshment of Nick Griffin or someone like yeah. Al Lubell would go up and yeah. bomb. Who? Al Lubell. Too smart oh, Al for the Lubell, room. Yeah. But I fucking loved his jokes. Love I, Lubell. I, I thought he had killer jokes, but the, but it was too smart for the room. It was too quirky for the room. Yeah. But I loved watching him, but there would be a lot of hacks going up there. Oh, but then, yeah. But then I'd see Nick pop in on the lineup and I'd be like, thank God. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know? That was nice. Oh, thanks. You, Vecchione. Nice. Vecchione was the king. Yeah. And he was so cool, too. But I mean, yeah, we love Mike, obviously, but... uh you were you were another dude that I was like, and you were nice to me as a young comic, which which went such a long way. Yeah, you know? that means because we both Mark and I would be like, man, Nick Griffin, like that's a fucking that's how you do a late night set. That's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we were all over you. I mean, I would yeah. watch you to go, oh, that's how you do it. You know, if you haven't phone. seen his Thanks. Google Nick Griffin Letterman, there's eleven sets, and I shit you not, they're all killer. They're like they're must watch sets. I didn't I mean, know it was eleven. That's crazy. That's so impressive. And yeah. there's one. Do you remember where he fixed your tie? Yes, he fixed your collar. My collar. Yeah, I was hanging out. Yeah, that was really because you you know that he doesn't give you a lot after the show. No, he shakes your no. hand and he's not warm. Away, but he he was real nice. You know, you could tell he he, he you could tell he knew it was a big moment for you. Yes. So he was really present in that, you know, 15, 20 seconds that he's with you. But I know it seems weird, but he really was. You could tell he was admired. But how meaningful was that for you to watch this guy and then be next to him on on the Ed Sullivan stage? Crazy. I can't tell you how many times I came home half drunk and high, sitting in a chair, and everyone's upstairs asleep, and I'm watching Letterman just going... What is going on? This is insanity. The show was so different back then. Oh, yeah. He's throwing and, stuff uh, off the roof, fucking with the, uh, the stuff, bodega yeah, guy. Yeah, all that stuff was so great. And, Do you think uh, you were attracted to like the depression side of Lenin? Well, I'm sure the sad part of him was good, too, but also just the quirky. Like, he just... He would his monologue jokes weren't like Leno, you know, they were just kind of quirky and weird. Yeah, and someone odd. bomb and he would own it. Oh yeah, all that stuff was great. And uh And Paul was great. He kind of got Letterman so he would do the 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 music with his bombing. It was all it was it was so fun. Yeah, and a lot of the bands that he liked, you know, I thought were really cool like Warren Zevon would come yeah, on. Yeah, Pearl Steve Jam. Steve Earl. Yeah, you ever, you ever see the Warren Zevon on uh, on Larry Sanders? That great episode where he's like, I'm not doing fucking Werewolves of London. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And and they're like, of course not. And then, of course, they go to the actual episode and he does a, a, a song that's newer. And then Larry goes, well, we got a little extra time. Uh, would you do Werewolves of London? <laughs> that's what Larry Sanders is such a great show. Oh, such gold. a great show. It just show. makes me so happy. It's, that, so good. Yeah. Everyone was so real. Man, that show just was awesome. That was amazing. They amazing. nailed showbiz. They really did. The pettiness did. of it, the selfishness. And they got everything. Everyone to go in on it, you know. All yeah. those people who just guest starred on it were so good, so too. good, and Sharon fucking Rip Torn, was so good. Oh, and, oh my god, Torn. yeah. A- another oh, wreck. We talk about wrecks fucking... from this pod from our fucking Allison Brie app at Norman and Allison Brie wrecking defending your life. Got me to watch that. Another Rip Torn classic. You never saw that? I'd never seen it till wow. you guys were like raving about it. Brilliant what? movie, defending your life. Yeah. Oh my, incredible. God. So innovative. So uh, outside the box. Brilliant. I remember that uh, when they go back to the past lives and that 
like kind of burly older man is watching one of his past lives and it's just a girl brushing this doll's hair. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So good. So good. Albert Brooks is a genius. Yeah. yeah, he's cool. But we'll get him on soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think if he was in New York, I'm why, sure why not? he would. Why he's can't we? I don't know. I he's, mean, we make jokes about this, but like we've, been, we've been hit up by some fucking interesting people. Why the hell? Why not? I would I would love to have. I, I would be starstruck. Has Dave been on? Attell came on the on Mark. We did a bachelor party episode for Mark, which oh. I did as a surprise for Mark. He's a tough and, guest. And we and it was literally dealing with Dave. So I got like eight guests that episode. We had like, you know, you did a great Shane thing. Gillis, Joe DeRosa, Joe DeRosa, Sean, Sean Patton. Patton, Godfrey, Attell. I got a ton of guests. Uh Gary Veter. And Attell shows up. It was booking Dave, nailing Dave down Woo! is tough. I was like, In Dave, please. It's like a surprise bachelor party for Norman. It's going to mean, like, I know the look on his face when you walk through the door uh, is going to be just disbelief. Yeah. Because he won't believe that you actually showed up to this. And he was like, I'll, I'll try. And it was like me nagging Dave. And he, he did show up. Yes, he and did. And shit on all of us. Oh, for... well, we're all doing shots. And he at one point, he stood up and walked around. I go, what are you doing, Dave? He goes, I'm looking for punchline. <laughs> <laughs> he was so bored because we weren't zinging and zanging every two yeah, seconds. Yeah, he, he, he doesn't want to do it if it's not going to be jokes. Right. Well, well, we right. we try and uh, I mean hopefully when his special comes out it'll come back on we we love Dave so much and uh, I mean he's uh, his huge influence on like, anyone in New York comedy oh, has been yeah. influenced by Dave or Colin Quinn totally his, his jokes to me are like Beatles songs where like everyone has their favorite and yeah you just can't believe how good it is it's like plucked from the Heavens, man! Everyone's I remember, song uh, kind of sounds like it later. Like ah, uh, yes, your music yes. Sounds like them. The influence. influence, whether you know it or not. Yeah, God. right. You hear a Weezer song and you're like, Beatles, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. I did a thing Oasis, last night. At Beatles, a gig, and I go, I'm I'm terrible at bed. You remember to a lady, you know, it's just a fun goof. And I'm like, is that an Atel thing? Yeah. It just feels so Atel that I'm like, I can't even tell if that's his. Quick or punch if it just lines sounds in a club. Like him. Quick punch lines in the club sound like Dave. Yeah, that's He's, he almost has copyrighted quick punchlines in a comedy club. Wow. That's how that's how good he is. And so just, innovative. He'll be like, oh, what are you drinking? The guy goes, cider. goes, mmm, cider, the gateway to pottery. <laughs> like, how did you think of that? That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it's like Gate he found the perfect pottery. word for every example. Gate pottery Pottery is just so silly. Pottery, come on. Who thinks of pottery? We love David Tell. Oh. What about, uh, what about... Uh, Hit me, baby. Uh, this is an Atel joke about uh, I like uh, porn. You ever have your dad walk in on you when you're watching porn? You know what you don't want your dad to say when you're watching porn? Move over. <laughs> uh, my favorite, my favorite Atel joke ever is. I think this is one of the greatest jokes of all time. Where he goes. <laughs> You remember when you're young and you think your dad is Superman, and then you grow up and you realize he's just, just a, a drunk, drunk who wears a cape. Yeah, that's a classic. <laughs> that is like bri that is like a layered philosophical oh, brilliant yeah. joke. Oh, you know, yeah. I, in the form of a one liner. It's like a Hemingway line. Or it's something. unbelievable. It's so it's so it's, crazy. It's great, I saw a great one the other night. He goes, uh, you know, ladies, I think you like a vibrator because it sounds like it's listening. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Genius. Yeah. Genius. Savant level. But you saw him. Did you see him in the beginning when he sucked? Or did he never no, suck? No, I never saw him suck. I, I never saw imagine. him suck. I don't think he ever did suck. I, I mean, I... he had some jokes he's probably not proud of like we all do. But I sure. remember like early on in maybe 91, he had a joke about being a waiter in a in a mental institution. Huh. And, uh, Is that real? No. Oh, okay. I don't think no. So. You never know. And uh, what was the joke? Or something like uh, you'd go to the table, the guy'd be like cheese sandwich, and he goes, "You want a cheese sandwich? I am a cheese sandwich." <laughs> <laughs> Even his clean stuff was good. The 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 mafia weather. That, yeah, that was, was a great. great joke. Oh my god, jihad. Yes. Oh man. I still Hello. think of that joke. Uh, in the Middle East, it's a very sacred place. No one has sex, but they all smell like they just did. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. Woo. He's gonna hate this. Oh, he won't. Oh, he'll, he'll hate it. Never he'll hate it. We literally just we love it hell. So yeah, what are you yeah. gonna do? The king, the king. <laughs> I mean, I've told the joke before, and it's the last time I'll say it. I swear to God, internet. He's on stage. 
all the comics ate shit. He goes up. There's these two Hispanic women in the front row, and they won't laugh at anything. Their arms are crossed. They're chewing gum. And he goes, oh, what happened, ladies? Did Selena die again? <laughs> oh, I mean, that's amazing. Dude, another great Atel riff. I remember watching three people in glasses. Because in the cellar, you know, the bathroom is in the corner. So yeah. people all just walk out. You see it from the stage. Three dudes in glasses all come out at the same time. And he goes, what is that, a nerd portal? <laughs> <laughs> Killed. Wow. Man. The quickness. The guy. He's the guy. He's Highlander. Oh my god The legend Who are other guys That when you were coming up You were like I fucking love this guy uh, I don't know if you Know it But like Ray Romano Was an amazing really? joke And he was he, It was married jokes But it was It had edge And really cool stuff Colin Quinn Yeah uh, Romano's such a cool I mean I love Sweet C guy We know CQ well And we love Colin But like I don't know Ray Romano as well But he's so freaking nice He was yeah. so yeah. nice to me He was another guy Who was super nice to me I would do these Late night sets At the cellar And he would drive me home uh, To the East Village And just give me a ride home As he was heading to Queens And just You kind of knew He was going to be a big deal Um Oh really? I can't think of anything. I can't think of anyone else that I. Did you ever I mean, hear, uh, tell was gigantic. You ever hear of Ronnie Shakes? No. You don't oh, know he Ronnie Shakes, but I know the name. He oh, was, great a, Carson says. Yeah, man. he did a couple. Really? Of Car I thought Mark, you I love, love that him. you're fucking. Mark is such a comedy I'll look that nerd, up and, and I love that you. Because I mean, I remember watching Ronnie Shakes. That really? Been, this dude's got. He's got the goods. Uh, put pull this up. <laughs> we experience life a little differently. Give an example. Last February, I had occasion to fall eight stories down the elevator shaft. I was happy to be alive, but I was ticked off. I missed my floor. <laughs> hold on, hold on. It's a good joke. It's a good joke. It's a good joke. My big problem is I spend money with reckless Last month, I put five thousand dollars at a reincarnation seminar. A very Stephen Wright. Another thing I want to help. You all live once. <laughs> That's smart. His my favorite joke of his is uh, I, I I figured I'm gonna kill myself. I'm gonna commit suicide, and I thought I'm gonna walk out to the ocean and just just end it. And I realized I wasn't a hundred percent serious when I brought a towel. You know? <laughs> I love his joke about how he. How goes, do you know of Ronnie Shakes? Well, we watch old late YouTube oh, sets. You but I love his joke about how he goes uh, after five years. My therapist said something that brought a tear to my eye. He said, uh, "No hablo inglés." <laughs> <laughs> after five years, that's yeah. great. I mean, he he had great shit. I mean, it, he's. I think Mark and I were just like we were bonded over what nerds we were when we were Mark yeah. and I were open micers yeah. and like. You know, uh, died jogging, you know, in Cleveland. Ah, oh. even worse than your story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was full it was. circle. But uh, yeah, no, he was uh, he was a great joke writer. I mean, Jeff Stilson was a great joke writer. I don't know his stuff as you well. Don't know pull, his stuff. pull him up. Pull him up. Stilson. He's got the maybe the best uh, Jeffrey Dahmer joke I ever Ooh. heard. What is it? I can't remember it exactly, but it was something I don't know about. Jeff. I've heard the name, but I don't know his stuff. Evening at the Improv. Wow, we're getting. Oh my God! We're Evening at the Improv. Here. Of whom I gave birth. Sorry. There you go. I, uh, yeah. I have a great respect for women. I really do, especially mothers. You know, I can never raise a child to whom I gave birth. You know, because a newborn is about the size of a basketball, and if I had to expel a basketball from my body via a very restricted passageway, <laughs> I would never want to see that basketball again. Hmm. Yeah, this is early, but he had he had a, 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 a Dahmer joke about Jeffrey Dahmer drugged, ate. Can you look uh, up Dahmer? Killed Dahmer. killed people, and then uh, had sex with their dead bodies. And he always wore a condom. He goes, "Isn't that unusual that the only message that got through to Jeffrey Dahmer was wear a condom?" Uh, <laughs> that's, 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 that's a funny, that's a funny angle. Wow. Gives you hope, though. You see that, that last joke, the basketball joke, and you're like, all right, all right. Well, that's like a, well, it's like a setup. It's also... <laughs> but I get it. I got a million horrible jokes from but my early like, days. It is kind of like inspiring in yes. the sense that it's not that great. You go, I could probably come up with something. Yeah, like yeah. Kid. Yeah, but that's not the message you want to send with your comedy. No, no, no. no, no, no. I don't, but I don't, he also, I don't want, I don't he want, also I want 14 year olds being like, I could do that. He was a Letterman writer. He he created the Osbournes or he was the- Oh, I didn't know that. The Osbournes. Wow. wow. That's a big paycheck right there. 
Yeah. Wow, Stilson. There you go. Yeah, I love no, that your backdrop is said, Tom uh, Waits. He used to write all these cynical jokes about not wanting to get married, and he has like four kids now, and he's married. And I remember going up to him at the Comedy and Magic Club, and I said, how'd you get married? I can't believe you got married. I go, I grew up you know, getting information about how bad <laughs> marriage was for me. And he's like, I found the right girl. I just, And I hated doing stand-up at uh, The Late Show on Friday night. I just got, couldn't wow. do it anymore. So yeah. He, he went into writing. Bill Burr had like two That's a very romantic way to propose to someone. <laughs> I hate doing comedy on Fridays. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> I'm done with late night. Let's yeah. get hitched. Yeah, yeah. Bill Burr had all these jokes about not getting married. What, marriage is stupid. Is this the line to lose all my shit? That was his big big joke. But, right, right. but he got married. You know, it just it happens. It just I didn't want to get married. I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun at your wedding, though. No, nah, it was a good wedding. That was a great thing. It's funny, you had the Tom Waits thing there, because I, I just saw a Tom Waits thing. It was like, man, he's got some words of wisdom. I mean, I love Tom Waits' music, but you know what the crazy thing about Tom Waits is? His first album, he's like 24, and it's some of the most insane shit you've yeah. ever heard. I mean, he's really brilliant, I think. I mean, you're clearly a fan if you have his bad yeah, job. Yeah, no, there, he's but. got some great quips on Letterman, by the way. Very funny. Some great oh, stuff. Oh, my God, he has a couple great appearances on Letterman. He's killer on so Letterman. So cool, cool, and and got wisdom. Can we get Tom Waits on here? Oh, Matt? we wouldn't be able Does to Does he live him. in New York? He, he wouldn't be able to. He, no, he lives in Northern California. Ah, He'd be yeah, a killer he guest. Tom Waits for no man. Uh, so <laughs> we also lost a legend here. Yeah, oh, Tony wow. Bennett. Oh, we did? Yeah, he died yesterday. Yeah, he died. What? And I was reading his old. Oh, sorry. Can't I love my... Tony Bennett. Can't okay, sorry. <laughs> what? Uh, save. He, uh, he liberated Dachau. What do you mean? Yeah, he was in I the saw army, that. and he was one of the first people in to be like, get the wow. fuck out of here. I know, here. I saw that. It's insane. What a I didn't know that until he died, honestly. Uh, wow, I'd have that on my t shirt. That'd be my merch. Liberated Daka over here. And sang with Lady Gaga. I mean, oh. two, two big things. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait, what were we just... Oh, yeah. Wait. I love Tony Bennett, man. He was, a, yeah. he was a fucking... He was a gangster. And he did, you know what's cool about Tony Bennett? He did it till 95, dude. Woo! Yeah. Like, you, like, we talk about Rickles, Joan Rivers, Tony Bennett. They all did, did it, it well till the end. Until late. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Not just did it till the end, but they did it well till the end. So a fucking... A toast to the great Tony Bennett. TB. Old TV. Every time I go to SF, I can't not think Old of I left my heart in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. Where's he from? I think he's from Brooklyn. He's got to be. Is he Italian or is he it's Jewish? Like I think it's Benedetto. I think he's uh, Italian. Okay. He's not but Jew. I'll let you know in one second. Okay. He's amazing. I mean, he's the crooner of all crooners. I love Tony Bennett. Wow. Nothing wrong with a good crooner, huh? Love a crooner. He was, he's the last of the crooners. Yeah. Yeah. It's the end of an era, man. It is. Anthony Benedetto. There you go. So don't think don't think that's a Jew. No. But it's funny how everybody back then would change their name to sound whiter. And I think now people are changing their name to sound less white. Like a Tom Takar, who used to be Tom Brady. Well, there was other issues with that. Uh, that's true, but he's from Long Island City. You, oh, know, you oh know what his name God. was before Tom Brady? I didn't even know Peyton that was Manning. a city back then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. All right. Well, you got dude, spots tonight? Yeah. Yeah, I have one not till eleven thirty. Hey. Well, uh, Nick, the name is de it's absolutely wonderful. It's Nick Griffin. It's on YouTube. I mean, truly, Mark and I talk about this guy. Big it's fan. hard to do it in front of him, but like yeah. he really is one of the best comics. Oh, and, thanks. And we love him. One Old of the, and new stuff. It's all he's, great. He's prolific. He he has incredible word economy. I mean, yes. the writing is so good. I remember watching. This is so fucking weird to say, but I remember watching your set with my grandpa before he died. <laughs> wow. He was dying of ah, esophageal that's my, cancer. That's my audience. It killed him. No, but I'm watching with, it's me, my mom, and my grandpa. There's three generations, and we're all laughing. That's and, that, and that's big. what I think is beautiful about Nick's comedy. And uh, not get that with Matt Rife. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, Rife Matt Rife's a good guy. We like Matt. I'm we're fucking good. Egg. We're rooting for him. <laughs> He's struggling. He's having a really uh, hard time. I'll open um, for you. <laughs> but Nick, you know your shit is so good. Thanks, and, buddy. And if you're not watching, Killer. watch his Letterman sets. Yes. Watch his new special. Absolutely wonderful. It's just like. They're just, it's great for literally every generation because it's, it's relatable. like. Relatable. It's, the, yeah, it's relatable and it's just such smart. concise, smart writing. And, and uh, it's got emotion in it. You somehow pack a, a lot of emotion in these quick 
punchy jokes, oh, which is hard to do. I, I really love his comedy. I know everyone watching is going to love his comedy, so I really hope you watch uh, his new special and uh, see him at Side Splitters, uh, July 27th through 29th at the, at the Grove and St. Louis, Missouri, The Funny Bone, August 24th through 27th. Great. I love that club. Love yeah. That. Uh, and, and uh, you know, you could see him weekly at the Comedy Cellar. He's always around. And he's got other a albums on, you know, Amazon, on Spotify, wherever you get your stuff. So it's all killer. And you were sad before it was cool. Every, <laughs> everybody's sad now. Everybody's depressed Look and on that, Prozac. Yeah. But uh, you were you were doing it early. I was. I I, I started that whole thing. Hell yeah. Me and I, Tom Waits. I got a special out now on the uh, the Big N streaming service, uh, Soup to Nuts. Check it out. And Look then I'm, I'm all over the road. Milwaukee, Des Moines, Los Angeles, Are San these Diego. all theaters you're playing? Now it is, yeah. Look Cincinnati, you. Springfield. Do you want to open? No, yes. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I, we couldn't follow you. Uh, then we're going to Europe. We're going to Lisbon and Norway and uh, Denmark and Netherlands and Germany and all that London, whatever. Germany, Dublin, Scotland, Oklahoma City, Ooh. Dallas, Portland, Providence, Cleveland. Gonna get wow. sober Glasgow in Cleveland. Glasgow and then Hershey, PA follows the next week. <laughs> that's <laughs> comedy, baby. Holy shit, that's, that's gonna comedy. be a. That's, you, that's, I went from fucking Greece to Edmonton. There so, you go. You go Emily Ratajkowski to <sighs> Kathy Bates. You well, know you gotta you know mix what? it up. You know what? Kathy was great in Misery. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the state I'm in in some of these places. So <laughs> we got, uh, what do I have coming up? We got, uh, oh my God, so Providence, Northampton, Burlington, Albany, uh, Calgary. What, what is that, man? Bethlehem, Bethlehem PA. York, Whee! Toronto. That's a fucking big theater, so please What's come out. One? The Chicago Theater oh, is wow. huge. Please come out to that. That's in September. Uh, we got Phoenix Stand Up Live. I love that place. And we got... Uh, Moon Hall, PA. I don't know if that is. That's Pittsburgh. Don't be Mun Hall. Why the fuck are they write Mun Hall? It's Pittsburgh. It's five minutes outside of Pittsburgh. Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, oh, Indianapolis. Bogarts. And the big one, MSG Theater, oh! New York City. You better come out. And we just added fucking uh, Australia. What? Because of you, motherfucker. Oh, God, I hope it works out. So Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, uh, Go Adelaide, see this chooch, all please. these motherfuckers. You better come out. That's a pricey fucking round trip ticket. Big and ticket. It's, and I'm losing two days of my life for this shit each way. So yeah, yeah. I love you guys. I hope you come out. We love you. Ooh, Drink exciting. Bodega Cat Whiskey, bodegacatwhiskey.com. You can order it. That's me and Mark's shit. It's, yes. it, we're going to be we're so close to New York. I can feel it. Yeah, I want it. We're getting uh, in there, baby. And watch Nick Griffin's special. Absolutely wonderful on YouTube. Truly, I, I say this again. Yes. Please watch it. I mean, he is... You won't a be disappointed. A true yeah. comics comic. This is a dude that is deeply respected in the industry. Uh, <laughs> and it, the specials, I haven't seen it yet, but everything I've seen from his killer, I love following him at the cellar because it's he's, he's putting good shit into the air. Yes, it's it, great comedy. It's great writing. Please watch. You won't be disappointed if you like stand-up comedy. It's good comedy. And uh, and we love you guys, and thank you for listening. And uh, Salamanca, you got anything? <laughs> yeah, he, he was a good comedian. Where'd you get that shirt? Uh, someone sold it to me on Instagram. They're like, they targeted ad. Like, you must like Norm Macdonald. Wow. Like, I do. Damn, dude. Damn. Do they do they also do a targeted ad? You must like cock. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Norm joke. He loves cock. <laughs> All right, we love you guys. Thank you for listening. Take care. Yeah. Uh, All right, Nick. Fun.